last week on the club. So West Coast are going to win a big game. They're now in the top four. This is what um, all the work goes in for, whether you're a player or a coach or a supporter. You know, this is everything you've invested goes into this part of the season. And there's plenty of people outside the club that would love to see you know, the club implode, that would love to see the team capitulate and just fall away altogether. But that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because of the, the quality of the people that we've got here. Price is going to uh, do the sensible thing. He kicks it high into the goal square. They fly down to the ground. It comes. Kick off the ground here by McKenna. I fell in love with the club at a very early age. Um, I was a five-year-old uh, in grade prep in Brodie. Uh, there weren't so many Collingwood supporters, I don't think, out there in those days, but uh, I just fell in love with Peter McKenna. Great understanding. Down towards a mighty Peter McKenna. It's <laughs> only about 30 yards out directly in front, and there he is. I just fell in love with the whole thing and uh, the excitement that seemed to go with it all the time. First time I ever went to Victoria Park when, you know, getting on the train at Broadie and that, catching it out to uh, to Victoria Park and thought I had to get off at Collingwood Station and couldn't believe that we actually had a station called Victoria Park and walking over the footbridge as a little boy holding my dad's hand and seeing the black and white stripes on the stand, I just couldn't believe it. It was for the first time in my life I really felt like I was part of a community um, and it really had, really resonated with me. It was just great. It was Boys Own Annual. It was just the biggest thing in my life, and it has <laughs> been that ever since. As silly as this sounds, uh, we did a renovation recently, and they all barracked for Collingwood, all the tradies. They're the ones who got the gig. <laughs> yeah, I warm to people when they say, I know how stupid this sounds, but when somebody says, oh, barracked for the pies, oh, really good on you, mate, and you're instantly warm to people like that. I do, I just, I love the culture of the club. I love what it stands for, and I know that what I'm saying resonates with so many other people. As a reporter, you know, I probably got as close as you could possibly get at that stage, and it was amazing to get close to the club and then get to know the people involved and to be involved in so many stories. Uh, you know, I got the exclusive interview with Lee Matthews when he was appointed at Collingwood. I got that vision out at quarter time, his first ever address. This is where it's hard. This is when your legs ache. However you're feeling, they're aching just as much. They're one week. Can we pick them up? It was a time of my life. I was 24, 25 years of age. So I was right in the club. And uh, to be there in 1990, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's well documented when you see Lee come down that I'm on the ground and I just let it let go. Got all the interviews and was on stage with the boys that night shooting it from the side. It just fueled my love for the club and, and, and what it meant. <laughs> They used to joke at Channel 10, you know, they wouldn't get any work out of me after four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon if the pies got rolled, but, uh, uh, but that was it. I mean, I was passionate, but at the same time, you've got to be professional. How did it, it develop? Well, really, there was no one stepping forward. It was one of those ones I sometimes look back and I think, maybe I was the bloke who, who didn't move and everyone took the step back and I was left out the front. Because it wasn't at any stage in my... Um, my business plan, as far as what I was doing as a, a television personality. I think back now, I think, God, I was 33 years of age when all this was going on. You know, what was I thinking? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and there were times in the first 12 months where I thought, geez, maybe I am just a footy show host here and I've bitten off more than I could chew. Well, it's a tremendous honour, Matt, and uh, terribly humbling, to be honest. But uh, it is day one and uh, the job is ahead of us. And it's a, a big job, a tremendous challenge, one that I'm looking forward to with relish with the rest of the board. But yeah, we have got a lot of work to do and uh, it starts now. As it turned out, you know, at some stage, I'd obviously I thought I was the man for the job and others agreed and the members agreed and away we went. And, you know, it's just been an enormous part of my life and uh, I look back on it now, it's, it's been a fair bit of my life. It's over a quarter of my life. So uh, it was amazing times. Oh. 
One last clearance, one last chance. Can somebody get a clear ball here and kick it along and hard? Goddard, the tap. Del Santo. It's going to be a draw. It's unbelievable. But it's happened. <laughs> In 2010, after the draw, you know, I, I went back on my knowledge of, of the game and knowledge of history to 1977 and how Collingwood mucked it up and North Melbourne got it right. You see the shot of me talking to Mick Malthouse and uh, David Butterfant and also to Nick Maxwell. And at that stage, you know, we'd just been told that there'd been a flood on one side of the ground and we had to go to the other and all the rest of it. And, and, and my job then was to be the cool head. These guys have just been in the heat of battle. So that's where you come into it and you say, right, okay, take a deep breath, Mick, you do your media conference, let's all convene, but I think we should go to the dinner tonight. And a few others said, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't. I said, well, okay, just have a think because at the moment, I think we're going to go to the dinner tonight. We did all the logistics. We realised that if we went there that night, we'd have everybody in one spot, all the parents, all the friends. We could work out the ticketing. Uh, we were doing uh, deals with the AFL right from the moment the siren went right the way through so we could tell people what was going on. We had to eat anyway. And the worst thing is, if you are scattered around a place, people get on Twitter, texting, and the mind goes. So we were able to get everybody together, get the disappointment out, get the mind focused. So by the time we went home at 10 o'clock that night, all these things were done. So that's what you do. You, you've got to be on top of those things and be able to read the play and be ready to go. Have the contingency plan ready, win, lose or draw. Well, we know who's going to get their hands all around that in the next 15 minutes. Well, that, that, the 2010 Grand Final was uh, one of the greatest moments, if not the greatest moment of my life. And I just sat there and with 10 minutes to go, I, ten, I turned to my wife and my two kids and I said, enjoy the next 10 minutes, we're home. And Carlos said, don't say, I said, we're home. We're not gonna get beaten from here. Mind you, I'd counted to make sure we didn't have 19 men on the field at that stage in case something would happen. But I said, enjoy the next 10 minutes because these are gonna be the most satisfying 10 minutes and most peaceful 10 minutes of our life. We've won the premiership. There's 10 minutes to go. Everyone's happy. Everyone's beside themselves. The feeling was there the feeling of satisfaction. It's the most amazing thing that you can have in your life. And, uh, you know, I'll take that to the grave. So Collingwood win by their greatest ever margin in a grand final. It doesn't get better than that. You know, on that day for me, you know, a lot of things came together for me. My boyhood idol, Peter McKenna, the reason why I was a Collingwood supporter, handed the cup to Mick Malthouse and to Nick Maxwell, and they turned around to the Collingwood supporters, full in our social club at the MCG, and held the Premiership Cup up. And for me, that was it. I had my two boys with me and my wife who have been through the journey. They didn't sign up for it, but they've been right through it. And, and everyone, and just the unbridled joy. There's a magpie, there's a good sign, there's a magpie and the first jumper, I always look at and hope that when I drive around here coming to Punt Road, the first jumper I see is a Collingwood jumper and it was, a couple having a kick out there on the uh, on our ground at Gosh's Paddock, so that's a good sign. Big swooping magpie and a couple of magpie jumpers just to start, so we're off to a good start. This is my site, this is what I love, see these two, this person here, the father and his son, go on here mate, cheers buddy, his father and his son going to the footy. And that was what I was like with, uh, as a little boy. And that just gladdens my heart to see the father and his son, they've got all the Collingwood gear on, they've got the Collingwood jumpers, and uh, they're going off to the footy to have a special night together on the eve of Father's Day. It's amazing coming in here now, when, you're, when I was a kid, of course, the uh, Southern Stand used to be set back in a bit there. So you used to come up from Richmond Station, walk along it, and walk in, and you just see the MCG and the lines. These days, of course, completely different. And, Apart from uh, the fact I'm not coming in by train from Broadmeadows, <laughs> it's a bit different. Go, boys. Get the camera on this. These are the umpires. What do you reckon? I go after them? <laughs> it's very tempting, guys. 
Very tempting. <laughs> Hi, Chelsea. How are you? I'll trust the binoculars. All right, let's go. Well, you know, I think I'm getting worse. Um, you know, I, as a kid, I used to, uh, you know, have my scarf and my football jumper folded at the end of my bed, and, and you'd be that revved up and couldn't sleep and the excitement. These days, there's no doubt on a big game, I get up, and you know what, I'm testy. Um, Carla and the boys know to sort of give me a little bit of space, and you can't help but uh, just get uh, fired up thinking about the game and the, and the repercussions. And as president, you're looking for every bit of advantage that you, you can add. And all I try to do from that stage is ask the coach, the football director, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? And back them in 100%. You know, offer advice if it's, if it's there, if it needs to be given or if it's asked for. But by and large, if you've got to the finals, then the boys and the administration have done the job. And from there, you just want to make sure that you can get things right. Good stuff. You'll never see Carla or myself sell a magazine story, but one thing we refuse to do is live in a bubble. And my two boys, people have probably watched them grow up sitting next to me at the footy, and, and they're like anyone, they want to sit with their dad at the footy, and you know, we change the rules to let kids sit in that sort of official enclosure, because to be perfectly honest, if I couldn't do it, I, I wouldn't do the job, I wouldn't stay on as president, I want to be with my kids, I want to go to the footy with my kids. boys walk out the tunnel and run through the banner and the crowd's there and we're ready for action. It, it's, it's amazing. It's, you can't help but to feel the privilege of being involved in the Collingwood Football Club. They may make a mistake. This is massive for, for Collingwood. They've got to win to get a top four spot on the ladder. Sets up a game against Hawthorne. Kicking towards Cloak. Gets rid of one and he takes the mark. Gee, I tell you what, that'll bring delight to Collingwood fans. Come on, big fella, put it through. Travis Cloak directly in front, and they get one back, the Pies. Handball out for Solo, and his left side needs to bounce, it does. Go! Yes! And, yeah, I jump up and down every now and again, because it's my release, and I love getting involved in it and uh, teaching my boys the tactics and what's going on. And I do, I immerse myself. Come on, boys, let's get going. Stoppage work here. Swan, Trick Melcham into going wide. Long and direct. Cloak's got the body position and gets over the top. To go! Oh! For Solo, lays on and finds Cracker, and Cracker will get an easy look. Everything he's done has been fantastic tonight, Andrew Cracker. Come on, he deserves a goal here. Come on, Andy, put it through. So at six months of the knee reconstruction, let's hope he gets a goal. Unbelievable, this will be his first goal of the year in his first game of the year. Watch yeah. them get to Andrew Cracker. That's how you play. See what happens when you just get your head over the ball. Look at that. Unbelievable comeback. So the Pies here, desperately trying to get a score. Cloak, can he hang on to it? The umpires paid it. Now put it through, Cloakie. Kick your fifth and put us in fourth spot. Come on. For his fifth goal and a 21-point Magpie lead, and he's done it, the big man. Oh, yes! Harry oh. O'Brien saying, I want an opportunity to score here. Perry will kick this. Just kicked the one goal this year in his 21 games. It's online, it's all about journey, distance, got it. Yeah! I defy anybody who has got any, any amount of adrenaline in their, in their body or has got any passion in their soul to, to not get caught up. And uh, you know, I think it's great to, to release it and enjoy it. That's right, isn't it, mate? Yeah. No well, they'll take on Hawthorne next weekend. 
They will be ecstatic about that. There's, as much as I ever give to Collingwood, I'll never give enough to repay the love and the satisfaction and the feeling of community that this football club has filled my heart with from the time I was a five-year-old boy to this very day.